So let's start this one controversial. The watch I'm going to present to you today has a manufacturer suggested retail price of 8760 euros. Now I'll tell you that the movement in this one is based on the foundations of the well-known Valju 7750 movement. Hold up. I must be joking, right? No true in-house movement at this price point? In this video I will tell you why I'm not only totally okay with this, but why I think the whole completely in-house glorification by most consumers is a bit overrated, considering the beauty of this heavily modified and finished 7750 inside. Let's take some time to talk about this conundrum, Graham as a brand and this Silverstone RS GMT from 2018. My name is Jan and you're watching the Time Channel. I wonder what kind of watches you picture when thinking about Graham. I'm wondering because before I took a closer look at their lineup, my image of the brand can be described with eccentric, gaudy sometimes, outlandish even. Mostly too much so for my taste. But, and that's very important, they were never boring. The latter fact led me to dig a little deeper into the lineup of the brand until my eyes rested upon the silver stone line. Still plenty of unique features, but no crown security mechanism that looks like a lighter or bulbous subdial design. But even those aforementioned over-the-top designs are available in such a wide array of variations that there usually always is at least a combination where I am tempted, well, at least a little. Kudos to them for pulling that off and their creativity in general in a world where we usually discuss at length what a difference of one millimeter does to a submariner's design. Sorry, couldn't resist that jab. Let's dive into the history of Graham for a moment. So you've seen that the box is nicely finished in piano black, but what you've probably noticed first is the little sentence down here, Graham watchmakers since 1695. And that refers to the legacy of George Graham, master watchmaker born in 1673 and famous for the so-called Graham escapement innovation to the traditional anchor mechanism for very precise pendulum clocks. So the year 1695 does represent their devotion to that legacy rather than their own existence as a brand. Because the British Swiss watch brand Graham was founded in 1995 as part of the Le Mans SA. And it aimed to recollect on the British master watchmakers such as George Graham and John Arnold. They brought forth their first collection of Graham as well as Arnold and Son watches in 1998. The brand was renamed the British Masters in 2001, based in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland when a new investor, chairman and British distributor joined and it was the same year that their iconic Chrono Fighter series was first released. Arnold and Son was sold off in 2010 to La Joux Perret and the British masters therefore not only focused on Graham as a brand but were also renamed to Graham London. So the Silverstone line has obvious racing references towards the famous British racetrack although this particular model the Silverstone RS GMT was produced for another less known race in Switzerland, the Gurnigel Bergrennen Hill Race, where Graham served as the official timekeeper and sponsor. This limited edition came as two versions, both with only 250 pieces produced, a white one and a beige one, which only refers to the color of the hour and minutes hand. I, or rather the first owner of this watch, chose the beige quilted strap, which is my favorite as well. The tire strap is unique, but a little tacky in my opinion. The beige leather fits the whole racing car interior vibe much better in my opinion. But let's talk about the whole watch in detail. So it is quite a large watch and I measured myself 47.5 millimeters over the bezel. And if you look up the watch online, you will see that they denote it with a 46 millimeter diameter. And they probably measured the case itself here, which is a little bit smaller than the bezel, as you might see here. And it is 54 millimeters from lug to lug and 16.5 millimeters from top to bottom. 
It has a lock width of 24 millimeters and it is also no lightweight uh, coming in at 168 grams, which is not a surprise given its dimensions. Let's have a quick look at the side again because uh, we have a very unique feature here. It is a red aluminum ring setting apart the bezel and the case it goes all around it. And it has a very interesting uh, so-called clou de Paris pattern, which breaks up the hefty side profile quite nicely. Additionally, on top, we have a black ceramic bezel with a beige 24 hour GMT graduation. The start stop pusher has a red rubber catch on it, which is a nice detail as well. The crown itself is nicely guarded and has the RS logo on it. Additionally, the bayonet mechanism on it also ensures that the RS logo is always uh, displayed here horizontally. And the reset or flyback pusher down here, as it also says on it directly, is uh, in a red aluminum. In this price range, uh, it is not very surprising that we have a sapphire crystal on it with AR coating or anti-reflective coating on both sides. And going back to the lugs here, as I told you, it has a lug width of 24 millimeters and the strap transitions nicely and seamlessly here from the case towards the clasp. It is also tapered towards a 20 millimeter uh, thickness at the clasp and it is very beautifully quilted here. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And that whole aesthetic gives off a nice vibe of a race car interior, in my opinion. The clasp itself is quite large again and it is 28 millimeters in width and if you look at it it gives off a vibe uh, to be maybe a pin buckle system but you have the two pushers down here and you can actually see that uh, you have a butterfly clasp underneath. Let's have a look at the beautiful watch face and all of its function that it is showing. The dial is black with Smoked little windows worked into it to give a partially skeletonized look underneath at the date disc and the movement, which itself is very beautifully finished with a perlage on it. We have a wide minute scale going around the dial with a 1 8th of a second graduation, which makes much sense given the 8 beats per second movement. On the rayout or the outer rim of the dial we have a beige tachymeter scale on it. At 6 o'clock you can see the big date window here and uh, as I already mentioned it is a flyback chronograph so you have a central red seconds hand for that. Additionally the minutes and hour hand have a very unique shape and the hour and minutes hand also have quite a bit of super luminova coating which I will show you in a night shot here as well. And we have additionally a GMT hand that points to the outer 24 hour GMT scale on the ceramic bezel. And with this watch, we definitely have to talk about the case back, which is just so beautiful in my opinion. So we have a sapphire crystal here as a display case back and around the dial you can uh, find a little bit of information about the watch. It is 100 meters water resistant and mine is the number 96 of the white version. And as I mentioned in the intro, the movement is based on a Vajou 7750, although heavily modified by the La Joux Perret movement company visible by the functions that a normal 7750 doesn't provide, like the big date, the GMT hand, or uh, the flyback chronograph. And it has just a gorgeous finish on it. It is therefore called the Graham G1721 automatic movement. It beats with the usual frequency of 28,800 beats per hour, ha sits on 28 joules, has a power reserve of 48 hours, and the movement has a certification called chronophiable. It is not related to the accuracy of the movement, but rather to its shock absorption. The chronophiable tests ensure durability under harsher conditions, such as intensive accelerations of the movement and shock, as you might expect it in a race car, for example. So with a look at this nice movement, I would like to pick up on the controversy that I stated in my intro. Um, many people would talk uh, Graham down for having third-party movements at the price points that they're trying to sell. And um, I 
can agree partially. So um, you could expect an in-house movement at this price point. But on the other side, this is very, very close to an uh, in-house development since uh, it has the base of a Vashu 7750, but it, they added so many functions and finished the whole movement so nicely. So not just the rotor, it is just a beautiful piece of art. And I think uh, the fact that it is a base ETA or Valju 7750 movement does not diminish any of the effort that they put into this movement. So what fuels this whole controversy is the MSRP, which I mentioned in the beginning, the 8,760 euros. But in all honesty, I would hesitate to grab one at that price point as well. I got it pre-owned, as I do with most of my watches, and I got this one in 2019. Pre-owned, it is somewhere in the range of 4,500 to 5,500, depending on the condition, as always. So th since this has the aesthetics of a race car, I think it is nice to compare to that, considering its price point. If you buy an expensive car, a new drive-off from the dealership's parking space, you usually already lost a lot of value of that car um, if you consider to resell it later on. That is something that we came to accept, but somehow with watches, everyone seems to have a different opinion. And in my opinion, there is nothing wrong with a watch that loses a little bit of its value on the secondary market. I think it is well worth 5,500 euros given all of its functions and its unique and very intricate design. So what do you think of this extravagant piece after I laid out to you why this watch is so interesting to me, together with all the aspects of the movement and its finishing that make it well worth the price on the pre-owned market? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the Graham brand and my favorable opinion on non-in-house powered luxury watches like the Silverstone RS GMT. Stay tuned for the next video on the Time Channel.